trick or treaty from Joshua chapter 9 and 10. Not trick or treat, trick or treaty. Let's see what this is all about. God had told Abraham 400 years before Israel came to the borders of Canaan that he would have to destroy all the Canaanites because of their wickedness. Yet God had waited these 400 years until their cup of iniquity was full. Now the time had come, and God's long-suffering was over. Therefore God commanded Israel to destroy all of them. None of these wicked nations were to be left alive. Do you remember the names of the two cities the Israelites had conquered in the Promised Land? There they are on the map, Jericho and Ai. Let's review how God led his people, the Israelites, into the land he promised them. First, God led them across the Jordan River on dry land. The people remembered how God had saved and sustained them. Next, God fought a battle at Jericho and gave the city to the Israelites. Remember, the walls fell down. However, during that battle, Achan disobeyed God's command and stole items from Jericho. The next town they needed to capture was a town west of Jericho called Ai. Do you see it on the map? Remember when they attacked Ai, they were defeated and 36 men died. Joshua and the leaders of the people tore their clothes, fell face down on the ground, and sprinkled dust on their heads and sought the Lord asking why they were defeated. God told Joshua there was sin in the camp. Achan's sin was found out. He had thought, no one will ever know. Achan and all of Israel were punished because God hates sin and punishes sin. Achan was stoned and a great pile of stones was piled up for the Israelites to remember what he had done. God gave Joshua a new strategy and the second time they attacked Ai, God defeated Ai, proving God blesses when people obey him in faith. As Joshua and the Israelites moved into the land God had promised to give them, the people who lived around them grew more and more nervous about the Israelites living in their land. Joshua 9 verse 2 tells us what these people decided to do. They gathered themselves together together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. Most of them thought that the best thing to do was fight the Israelites, even though they had already seen Israel defeat the people of Jericho and Ai. A nearby city, Gibeon, realized that if they didn't do something soon, they would be next in line to be destroyed by Israel's army but they came up with a different idea to protect themselves. Do you see Gibeon on the map? It's near Ai and Jericho. So the people of Gibeon came up with a different idea to protect themselves. Let's see what it was. The Gibeonites decided that they would pretend to be weary travelers from a far away land so that Joshua and the Israelites would not kill them. They decided not to join five other kings who had formed a coalition to attack Israel. But this city, Gibeon, decided to try their own plan in saving themselves. They would trick Israel into making a treaty with them. It wasn't long before a scraggly band of Gibeonites came to Joshua and the leaders of Israel, looking as if they were from far, far away. Their sandals and clothes looked as if they'd been worn to pieces. Their food seemed to be really old. Joshua 9 verses 8 through 12 tells us what they said to Joshua. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. 
Wherefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry, and it is moldy. The Gibeonites insisted that the bread they were carrying had been warm and fresh when they left home, but they were lying. These crafty ambassadors of Gibeon had matted their hair and beards and had put old clothes and sandals. They got skinny, limping donkeys with weather-worn saddlebags. They carried old patch wineskins and dry, moldy bread. All of this was part of their plan of trickery to make them look like they had traveled from a far country. Joshua and the other leaders checked out the Gibeonite story. Yes, the bread was old, their sandals were worn, but there was one really important thing the Israelites forgot to do. The Israelites did not ask God what they should do. That's right, they didn't ask God for guidance. So based on what they saw and touched and tasted, they made a treaty with the Gibeonites. Joshua and the elders of Israel were thrown completely off guard by the lies the men of Gibeon told, and they did not bother to ask counsel of the Lord. So they went ahead and signed a peace treaty with the Gibeonites. The Israelites gave their promise to these people that they would not kill them. Of course, it wasn't long before the clever trick was discovered. For three days later, the facts came out. These men were close neighbors of Israel. The Gibeonites were actually the Israelites' neighbors and lived very close by. Yep. It turned out that the Gibeonites were actually neighbors, and the Israelites had promised to protect them. Of course, the people of Israel wanted to go attack these liars. But Joshua and the leaders had made a promise. They weren't going to break their promise just because the Gibeonites had lied. So, they let the Gibeonites live. Joshua knew that God expects his people to keep their word, even if they were tricked into promising something they should not. Therefore, Joshua dared not put the Gibeonites to death, because Israel was already guilty of one wrong, and they should not add another wrong to their account. Do you ever hear that saying, two wrongs don't make a right? Joshua 9.21 tells us how the leaders kept their promise. And the princes said unto them, let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation. And from that time on, the Gibeonites became servants of Israel instead of captives of war. For the rest of their lives, they would carry water and wood for the needs of Israel. They were known as hewers of wood and drawers of water. So the Gibeonites did not escape scot-free. The Gibeonites were fine with this arrangement. After all, carrying water and chopping wood were sure better than being killed. Well, soon after that, five kings of the land got together. The five kings decided that they were going to attack the Gibeonites. That's right. The kings decided they would attack the Gibeonites because the Gibeonites had made this treaty with Israel, the very nation they were all afraid of. So King Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, contacted the kings of the cities of Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, and all of these kings agreed to help him. So these five kings joined forces and moved toward Gibeon, Wow, you can see there on this map, they were all headed to Gibeon to attack it because Gibeon had made a treaty with Israel. And of course, who did those Gibeonites ask for help? 
the Gibeonites asked Joshua and the Israelites for help. Help! Then the men of Gibeon sent urgent word to Joshua at his camp in Gilgal. They said, All the Amorite kings in the hill country have attacked us. Come at once and help us. Do not abandon us. So Joshua went to help them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand, and there shall not a man of them stand before thee. That must have made Joshua feel better, especially since he was risking his life and his best fighting men to save the Gibeonites. Joshua knew the Israelites would have to fight because he had made a treaty with Gibeon, but he depended on God to help them win. God did just what he said he would do. He helped Joshua protect those lying, scheming Gibeonites. Joshua and his army marched all night. As dawn broke, the Israelites showed up and surprised the other armies. But even better than the surprise attack, God made the five armies so confused that the enemy soldiers started running everywhere. The army of Israel pursued the other five armies, chasing them back down the road. And while the Israelites did that, God added some extra help. God sent huge hailstones down on the enemy. Hail is ice falling from the sky. And God sent huge balls of ice down on the enemy. Yes, God sent a hailstorm, a storm that sent huge hailstones from the sky. That stopped the five armies faster than anything else. Bonk! The battle was not over, though. Joshua needed more time to fight before the sun went down. On that day, Joshua prayed to God where all of the Israelites could hear him. He said, Sun, stand still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of Ajalon. When Joshua asked for the sun and the moon to stand still so that the Israelites could finish the battle in a day, God heard him. God stopped the sun and the moon in the sky. Nothing like that had ever happened before, and nothing like that has happened since. The Lord fought the battle for the Israelites in amazing ways. He confused the army. He sent huge balls of ice from the sky. And he caused the sun to stop so that the day was longer, so that they could win the battle. But when the Gibeonites showed up with their sneaky story, Joshua had to decide whether or not to believe them. But he forgot to ask God for help in making his decision. Because of that, Joshua made a big mistake. But when Joshua asked God for help to protect the Gibeonites, God did amazing things, right? God helped Joshua to defeat these five armies. Wow! Have you ever had a hard time deciding what to order from a menu? Yeah, that, there's so many choices, it's hard to decide. Everything looks good. Well, every day we have decisions to make. And some of them are a lot harder to make than choosing something to eat. When we're not sure what to do, God wants us to ask Him for help. And here's our verse today, Isaiah 48, 17. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Isaiah forty eight seventeen. Let's say it together. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Isaiah forty eight seventeen. He leads us by the way that we should go. We don't always know the best decisions to make, but God always knows exactly what we should do. No matter the choice, you can ask God to show you what is best, and He will. When Joshua made a treaty with the Gibeonites, he forgot that he needed to always ask God for help. 
Even Jesus, who's God's own son and is full of power, did not do things on his own. He often prayed to God for help, and he only did the things that God wanted him to do. Jesus always asked God for help, and he invites us to ask God for help too. So we want to do just what the Lord wants us to do, but we need to ask. We need to ask the Lord when we have to make decisions. We need to ask the Lord for help. Ask Him for wisdom. What should we do? Or what shouldn't we do? And you know, the Lord will help us. James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Sometimes we need wisdom, what to do. And it says, if we ask, God will give us wisdom. So remember, ask the Lord when you have decisions to make and when you have choices to make. Ask the Lord for wisdom and ask him to direct your steps like it says in Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. And now we have a few review questions. How many kings attacked Gibeon? You remember? Five. Why did the five kings attack Gibeon? Why did the five kings attack Gibeon? Gibeon made a treaty with Israel, and the kings didn't like it, did they? Whom did the Gibeonites ask to come save them? You remember? Joshua and the Israelites. When did Joshua and his army march to Gibeon? Did they wait two or three days? No, they marched all night. What did God throw down from the sky to help defeat the enemy armies? Hailstones. Who prayed to God for help during the battle? Joshua. What did Joshua pray? Remember what he prayed? He asked for the sun to stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. How did God answer Joshua's prayer? He allowed the sun to stay and provide light for the Israelites to defeat the enemy armies. Who fought for the Israelites? God did. So remember, when you have a decision to make, be sure and ask the Lord what to do, and He will guide you. As the Israelites fought to take the land promised to them by God, the people who still lived there shook in fear, knowing they would soon be destroyed. One of the mighty cities in this new land was so afraid they tricked Israel into making a deal for peace. They would do anything to stay alive. It wasn't long before the king of Jerusalem heard about this tricky deal, and he wasn't happy. He wanted to destroy Gibeon and weaken Israel. So he joined forces with four other kings, and they gathered with all of their troops to attack Gibeon. When the Gibeonites found out about what the five Amorite kings were planning against them, they sent word to Joshua, Do not leave your servants to fight alone. Come quickly and save us from the Amorite kings who have joined forces against us. Please help us. So Joshua marched up with his entire army, including all of his best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I've already given them into your hands so that not one of them will be able to stand against you. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua and his troops quickly caught up with the Amorite kings and surprised them in an attack. Just as God promised, he was with the Israelites. As their enemies ran for their lives, Israel chased them with weapons and God dropped huge hailstones on them. In fact, more of them died from hailstones than from the swords of the Israelites. Joshua and his men did not want to quit fighting until the Amorites were completely defeated. But they were running out of time. 
So Joshua went to the Lord before all of Israel and asked for a miracle. Please, he pleaded with the Lord, make the sun and the moon to stand still over Gibeon. And the Lord answered the prayer of Joshua. God caused the moon and the sun to stop moving. This was an amazing display of God's power over his creation. Surely, the Lord was with Joshua, and he fought for Israel. Joshua and the Israelites defeated Jericho and Ai. They made peace with their neighbors, the people of Gideon. The land they were in was ruled by five kings. The kings did not love God or worship him. The king of Jerusalem heard what the Israelites did to Jericho and Ai and how the Israelites had made peace with the Gibeonites. He was very afraid because Gibeon was a great city and all its men were warriors. Now, the Gibeonites and the Israelites were on the same side. The king of Jerusalem called to the other four kings in the land. He said to them, come with me and help me attack Gibeon because it has made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. So the five kings joined forces and went up with all their armies and camped outside Gibeon and started a war against Gibeon. The men of Gibeon sent a message to Joshua, help us, save us, all the kings who live in this land are at war with us. So Joshua and his whole army went to Gibeon to help them fight. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to stand against you. Joshua knew the Israelites would have to fight, but he depended on God to help them win. Joshua and his army marched all night from where they were staying, and they surprised the five kings' armies. The Lord confused the armies of the kings. As the Israelites fought, God helped them kill their enemies. The king's armies fled. The Lord threw huge hailstones from the sky, killing the men as they ran away. More men died from the hailstones than the Israelites killed with their swords. The battle was not over. Joshua needed more time to fight before the sun went down. On that day, Joshua prayed to God where all of the Israelites could hear him. He said, sun, stand still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stopped until Israel and Gibeon defeated their enemies. The sun stopped in the middle of the day and did not set for almost a full day. There has been no day like it before or since. It was a day when God listened to the voice of man and fought for the Israelites. When the battle was over, Joshua and all his army returned to where they were camping at Gilgal. Joshua's name means Yahweh is salvation. God fought for Joshua and the Israelites, saving them and giving them victory over their enemies. God brought us salvation by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross, giving us victory over sin and death. Sun, stand still. Wow, can you imagine? Joshua asked God to stop the sun, and God did. The sun didn't set for almost a full day. God answers the prayers of his people.